Hey YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a peach cobbler cake using a box cake mix, which I'm also gonna be showing you how to make your cake mix a lot more moist and to make it seem like a homemade cake. So you got two in one video. <laughs> all right, so to start off with the measurements of all of what you will need, you will need your choice of yellow cake mix. I'm gonna be using this one. You're gonna be using the ingredients exactly for the cake mix, but you're gonna substitute them. Now here in this cake mix, it calls for three eggs. I have four. You're gonna be using an extra egg to help with that moisture. Here I have one box of Jell-O Instant Pudding, vanilla flavored. I'm gonna be using half of this pack. And here, instead of water, I'm going to be using half of a cup of whole milk and half a cup of peach juice that I drained from the can of peaches. So in total, this is your one cup of liquid. So half whole milk and half peach juice from the can. Here I have one half cup of vegetable oil. You can also substitute this, but I'm not gonna do that today because of everything else that I'm adding to this cake um, better. I have a half a cup of vegetable oil. You can also use butter instead. And also, this is going to be for our peaches for the bottom of the pan. I have one cup of packed brown sugar. Here, I have some vanilla extract, which I'm only going to be using one teaspoon of. And here, I have one stick of butter that I'm going to be using to melt along with this brown sugar to put at the bottom of our cake pan. So, let's get started. Oh, yeah, and today I'm going to be using a hand mixer. I'm not going to use the stand mixer. And I'm sorry, one more thing. Uh, I have two cans of 14.5 ounces of sliced peaches. Probably not going to be using all of this. So we'll see when we get to that point. But for now, that's uh, two cans of 14.5 ounces of uh, sliced peaches. You can use the ones in syrup or water. Either way, it doesn't matter. You have to drain it as well. Make sure you drain your peaches and reserve some of the juice either for a glaze or to add as liquid in your cake mix. All right, so let's get started. I already opened up this uh, box cake, so I'm gonna dump that right in. And you're just gonna be, you know, dump everything in because it's not like it's a actual homemade cake where you have to do things in steps. So here are my four eggs. Gonna put my half a cup of sour cream. Gonna add my half a cup of whole milk and half a cup of peach juice, which totals to one cup of our liquid in substitution of water. Our vegetable oil. Guys, don't forget, like I said, you can use the same amount of melted butter in this step. Now, for my instant pudding mix, I'm only going to be using half a pack of this. Just a half. It's going to help with that rich vanilla flavor as well as moisture. Okay, now my one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now let's get to mixing.
Whoa. Started off a little too high. Sorry, guys. And the same thing with using a uh, cake mix. I mean, um, a hand mixer, you also don't want to over mix your batter. Just like as if you were making a regular cake mix because that can make your cake dense and a little dry. So I'm going to stop this and just like regular cakes, I'm going to have to scrape down the sides. Because of course the hand mixer is not going to help with that. Make sure we get everything. Let's mix. I'm only gonna do this probably about a minute or so because I don't want to over mix the cake. The cake better. Once you see that everything has already like dissolved as far as the eggs and the sour cream and no streaks of oil and no streaks of the liquid that you used and you can stop mixing. That means your cake is well mixed and you can stop at that point. Okay. okay, so our cake batter is well mixed. So now I'm going to make the brown sugar sauce for the bottom of the pan, which consists of one stick of butter. And I also forgot guys earlier to remind you, well, to let you know about the cinnamon. You're gonna need at least a half a teaspoon up to a teaspoon of cinnamon for this part here. and along with our one cup of packed brown sugar. So so let's get this part started so we can uh, layer our cake into the pan. Okay guys, so we have our one stick of butter that's starting to melt. I'm gonna let that melt a little bit more before I add the brown sugar and the cinnamon. So this butter is almost fully melted. I'm gonna move it around a little bit to help speed up the process. I'm going to add that one cup of packed brown sugar. This smells so good. <laughs> All right, so that should be fine. So I'm going to add that sugar. Then I'm going to add the cinnamon. Whoa. So there's that one cup. Break it down a little bit. And this part here, guys, when you add this to the bottom of your pan, it's kind of like doing a pineapple upside down cake. So, guys, this is going to help with caramelizing your cake to give it that nice brown color that you see when you flip your cake over, just like a pineapple upside down cake. So now I'm going to add this one, te one teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. And this is going to be the mix for that. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to let this cool a tad bit before I put it in the bottom of the pan. Okay, so let's get to the part where we put this cake all together. Okay, so this is done. I'm going to let this cool for a few minutes before I actually add it to the bottom of our cake pan. So let's go so we can put our cake together. All right guys, so let's put that cake together. But at this point you wanna make sure that your oven is preheating at the temperature of at least 325 to 350. Now I recommend 325 if you know that your oven is a tad bit hotter than you know others. But uh, if not, then put it at 350 degrees. So here we're going to start with spraying our pan of choice. We're going to be using a bump pan. Just make sure you get it everywhere. Especially on this middle side. And definitely the bottom. I think that should do. Okay, so we got that done. 
going to add a little of this mixture that we made with the butter, sugar, and the cinnamon. Guys, this smells so amazing. I know this cake is going to be good. So here we go. Just a little around. Okay, and that's it for that part. Just gonna leave that there. Okay, give it a little shake. Now, you wanna layer your peaches in here. We're gonna just go all the way around the pan with this. And guys, if you want, you can also add like uh, chopped peaches to your cake batter, but I didn't do that in this video. But make sure that if you do, just use only about a cup of chopped peaches inside of your cake batter because you don't want too much liquid and then the cake won't bake right. But I'm going to do mine this way. Where we have peach flavor in the cake from using the juice. And then we have peach flavor, you know, on the outside of the cake from the actual peaches. Hey, turn back over. Whoa. Okay. All right, guys, so I don't want to overcrowd this this part because, I, like I said, I don't want too much moisture inside of the cake to come from these peaches to where our cake becomes soggy and it won't bake correctly. So there you have it. Give you guys a close-up. This is what our inside is looking like. So now let's add the cake batter. All right, that's it for that. Now let's make sure this is level right. I'm just gonna go around the sides to make sure that the cake is evened out. And it looks about fine to me. So I'm gonna give this a little shake, a tap to get the air bubbles out. I'm gonna remove this off the top. All right, guys, so our cake is ready for the oven. I'm going to put this in the oven at 325 degrees for my oven because it's a bit hotter for about 35 to 40 minutes. So I will be back when it's time to check our cake midway so that you guys can see it. All right, guys, so it's time to check that cake. I've got my toothpick. Now let's go in and see what's going on on the inside. It's clean to me on one side, back side, other side, and bottom. Everything is all good here. So we're going to take this out and let this cool and we can get started on our glaze that we're going to make. Okay guys, so it's time to make that glaze for that peach cobbler cake. So here I have three-fourths of a cup of uh, powdered sugar and here I have a tablespoon of the peach juice that I reserved from the peaches from the can earlier and here I have some 
vanilla extract. So I'm going to be using one teaspoon of vanilla extract for this. So let me put that to the side and let's work on this glaze before we pop that cake out. So I'm going to add the peach juice. I'm going to start off with a little of it because I don't want my glaze to be too loose. So about almost a teaspoon of vanilla. I can leave that stuff there. So let's mix this up. I can feel I am going to be using the rest of that peach juice to thin this out a little more. So yeah, going with the full tablespoon. And if you like yours, after trying this recipe a little looser, then feel free to use a little bit more. Just want to get those lumps out. And that's perfect. Okay, let's set that to the side and pop this cake out. I'm so afraid. <laughs> I hope it's not sticking on the bottom. But the amount of butter and sugar that's in this thing, it should pop right out. So pray for me, guys. Okay. Well, I felt it. It's out. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, baby. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh, come on. Come on, guys. Y'all got to subscribe to this page now. Beautiful. This was beautifully done. We've executed this, guys. Sliding a little bit, but that's a good thing. All right, so let's move this back over a little bit. I'm excited. Oh, wow, that juice is amazing. All right, so let's get this glaze going on this cake. Guys, let me give you a quick close-up. Boom, look at that. All right, back up, back up, back up, back up. All right, let's get this glaze going. Guys, every time I do a cake, I always remind you guys that I am no professional decorator nor baker. I just know some things, so bear with me on how this glaze comes out on this cake. I'm just going to do a simple back and forth motion just to get some of that on there. Not going to be using all of this, definitely. Oh, come on. Look at that. That is beautiful. Come on, guys. Y'all got to hit that subscribe button now. Come on. I gave y'all a video with two and one, how to make your cakes moist and how to make this cake in your home. All right. I think that's about it. That should do. That is beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So that is our cake. Let me clean this up a little bit before we slice it. And I'll be right back. Give me a second, guys. Let me make this look a little bit pretty so we can cut it up. All right, guys. So I had a difficult time trying to clean this up. It just kept spreading because the cake is still a tad bit warm. So the uh, 
of glaze disappear. But if you want to make glaze, that's exactly how you do. But don't do what I did. Wait till your cake completely cools off um, 100% because the glaze is just going to melt like this did. So with that being said, I'm just going to cut into this cake right now so we can see how it looks on the inside. Oh, and look at that, guys. Nice and moist, beautiful cake. Wow. And there you have it, guys. Your very own made, homemade peach cobbler cake. So let's give this a try. And of course, you know, we got to check for moisture. You've seen the way that was cut. See that? That cake is fairly moist. So I'm going to try it. Mmm. Guys, if you like cinnamon, and if you like peaches, you definitely want to give this cake a try. This is amazing. All of the flavors blended wonderfully together, and the peaches taste perfect. They're not mushy. So guys, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel so that you can definitely see the rest of the recipes that I will be posting. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. See you in my next video.